What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm a Toxin Gaming today, people. Today we are back. We are back with all Toxin Gaming, yes, and we are going to be going over Tournament Pack 5's full uh, card list uh, that got announced and leaked while I was taking my two week break. Been a busy couple weeks. I've been kind of burned out from the game in general, but I decided that I would come back right before we get, uh, you know, the new G uh, GX leaks. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get hyped for this new tournament pack. Let's get hyped for these new league characters. Let's just get hyped because Speed Duels is about to be one of the best formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. I see it. It's going to be the best format ever. And we're going to start with these tournament pack cards. We're going to talk about the ultra rares. First on our list is going to be Elemental Hero Wild Heart like you see on screen. This is one of the best um, giant rat targets in your deck and we're finally getting it as an ultra rare. So you get your super rare Sparkmans if you're into heroes by doing Doing your OTPT events, um, and now you can get your ultra rare wild hearts by participating in your OTS tournaments. It is going to be a great time to be a hero player in the game of speed duels. If you're caught up with the current meta of speed duels and are a fan of the Cyber Angel archetype, um, or you know, are just a fan of playing meta in general, then you will definitely want to get your hands on this ultra rare Cyber Angel Ben 10. It is probably your best target and also a TCG staple for cards or for any ritual decks such as Drytron. So if you want to get your uh, tournament pack ultra rare, Ben 10 is definitely the one you want to invest in. Speaking about being... Speaking about it being a good time to be an Elemental Hero player, Elemental Hero Plasma Vice is also getting its Ultra Rare reprint in this set. Plasma Vice is by far the, one of the best Sparkman fusions until this new box comes out releasing the Shining Flare Wingman and is usually used in every Sparkman deck that you see. I think this card is very powerful in its own right and can have really unique decks built around it. However, I don't really necessarily think that the deck is meta-defining now. It could be in the future. To continue on with the Ultra Rares, that's the End Dragoon. It's a Dragoon! is also getting its ultra rare printing in speed duels which is incredible this card had a lot of uh, meta uh, relevance whenever fusion party was at its peak fusion party unfortunately did get errata but destiny hero Dra or destiny and dragoon is still seeing play in the current uh, hero deck that is running around on the ladder so I definitely recommend picking this up if you are a dragoon fan if you are a hero fan in general because it is one of the best boss monsters hero has had to date in speed duels Tend off the ultra rares in the this uh, tournament pack. We're going to be talking about Wall of Disruption, arguably the best battle trap we have ever gotten in speed duels. It was a force to be reckoned with in Duel Links, and we're seeing that same type of vibe coming from it here in speed duels as well. This card is so strong. If you activate multiple at the same time against Joey B, you officially have outed their skill and their monsters in the same uh, breath. This card is just very powerful, and it's nice to see it get the ultra rare printing. Moving on to our super rares, we get to see Goddess of the Third Eye getting a super rare printing. This is good for any fusion deck that you want to play, and it's just going to be one of those nice supers that you, when you pull out, you're like, alright, I can probably use this for a deck or two. Ancient Gear Beast, my personal favorite Ancient Gear monster, is also going to be getting his super rare printing coming in this set. This card is a phenomenal monarch monster. It does not have the same stats as a monarch, but it is very strong in its own right, being that your opponent can activate spell and trap cards, um and it gets the effect of monster effects that destroys by battle. So this card is very powerful, and I think that getting its super rare printing is a much needed uh, printing for the deck. Diamond Dude Turbo. Yes, this was one of the fan favorite decks with the release of the GX box, and here we are looking at uh, Destiny Hero Diamond Dude getting his super rare printing for the box as well. This card is a phenomenal super rare that we are going to see, and it's very good for any nostalgic format that you see Diamond Dude Turbo involved with. I think that us getting this is not only good for Time Wizard formats, but good for Speed Duels in general, because as long as we get Diamond, or as long as we get as long as we get Destiny Hero support, we will be seeing Diamond Dude played in the deck. And if you are a fan of the Raging Cat deck, Crystal Beast Amethyst Cat is going to be getting its super rare printing, which is going to be very nice for Speed Duels and anybody who really likes that deck because it is com a complete common deck and now you finally get to have your super rare boss monster as a, you know, super rare. So that's nice. Volcanic Shell, yes, the bane to my existence, the bane to most people's existence, the reason most of us have stopped playing speed duels until this new format comes out. Volcanics, yes, it is getting a super rare printing, and if you are into that kind of sacky kind of deck, like I know that Wet Flex is into, then this is the card for you to want to pick up from the new tournament pack. 
Exploder Dragon, like Wild Heart, is a good rat box target and it's played in most rat box decks. Not currently because of being a Cyber Angel format and you're not really able to bounce it to the hand. You have to destroy it into the protection effect. You, you guys know how the meta works. Uh, this card here is going to be nice for your rat box decks to completely rarity it out. It is probably not going to be a completed rarity out deck that I would do a profile on at some point because I love rat box and you will see me have the super rare Exploder Dragons in that deck list for sure. Sure. Are you a fan of Saki FTKs? Because you're getting Ojama Blue for Speed Duels. That's right. The Arm Dragon deck is finally getting its main card, or one of its main cards, as a upped rarity, being Ojama Blue. Surprisingly, they gave this a super and not Arm Dragon level 5, but with Arm Dragon level 7 coming out, um, and I, it's just weird. Or is it level 10? Level 10 is coming out. Uh, Ojama Blue is definitely the Ojama card to give the printing to at least as long as, long as we're not getting it to country or Ojama red I think this is the perfect card to give the super rare for for that but again I would have much rather have saw arm dragon level 5. Hammer shot boneless fissure our only really uh spot removal spell in the game is also getting a super rare um personally I don't think that this is going to have any meta implications and it really hasn't since its release but it's cool to see that it has a super rare spot. And of course, we're back to the meta being Machine Angel Ritual finally getting its super rare printing. I'm really happy to see this, but it should have definitely came in Tournament Pack 4. Um, it's just one of those things where we knew that Cyber Angels was always going to be a meta competitive deck, at least until Macrocosmos got re gets released. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to see the super rare and the upgraded rarity to your common meta deck. It's also time to see Jar of Greed finally getting a rarity boost. Uh, Jar of Greed came out in one of the first sets of speed duels, if not the first set of speed duels. And uh, yeah, it's only ever been a common. So getting to see it as a super rare is actually really nice. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see me getting more shiny cardboard. Moving on to the commons for the list, we're going to talk about Sinister Serpent. Serpent hasn't really seen any meta relevant play that I know of. Um, I'm not really that knowledgeable in most past formats of speed duels, except for, you know, the last year and a half. Um, but Sinister Serpent is, you know, nice. I can't say it's bad. Um, and it's going to be pretty nice to get for Time Wizard formats. Speaking of nice common cards to get for Time Wizards formats, we're also seeing Jinzo get his common reprinting. We haven't seen a Jinzo printing since uh, Battle City Box, so it's going to be really nice to actually be able to get your hands on some of the common cards in case you want them. Twin Headed Behemoth is going to be getting its common printing because we are getting the Red Eyes Dragon deck. I foresee this card having some sort of like implications that works with that deck in particular, but I don't see it being like a meta card. Um, if you do get it, end up getting it as a common, I foresee it, you know, being in some sort of weird dragon decks, maybe, but I, I couldn't tell you for sure. Yomi Ship is getting its common printing in this set as well. Uh, Yomi Ship saw a little bit of play with Zombina whenever it was first released because they were both released in the same set. But uh, outside of that, you haven't really seen too much of it. It got powered crep by another monster that came out and the Bakura and... and uh, Merrick deck, I just can't remember its name, but it's a fiend guy. Um, and so, yeah, Yomi Ship is, yeah, the common card coming out. It's not bad. Probably one of your better water monsters in speed duels. I don't know about you guys, but Drill Lago has been one of my, like, favorite Dark Machine monsters that they've released. I don't know why this artwork goes so hard, but it just is the most Yu-Gi-Oh artwork I've ever seen. Why does he have so many drills on him? And of course, we are looking at the common printing of the Dark Red Enchanter. Dark Red Enchanter did see some play when it was first released. I remember that for a fact because we had Apprentice Magician in the format, and this was the Apprentice Magician Monarch card that people were trying to use with it. Being that it gains counters and is able to rip cards from hand, it actually is kind of a good card to have. Um, but seeing it as a common, not bad at all. I'm not going to lie, I forgot this card was even in the format, and if you get it as a common, I doubt you'll ever play it. Sphere Karibo gets its umpteenth reprint, and it's a common again. You couldn't have given it at the Ultra at least, but oh well. Uh, I guess Ultra wouldn't have made sense since it already has an Ultra Rare from the... Uh, Nightmare set? Not Nightmare set. But it has an Ultra Rare printing already. It has a Secret Rare printing. Yeah, I guess Common works. We already have like three different Common printings of this card, but might as well see it come back again. Um, it's not going to be one of the worst cards for you to pull, but it's not going to be any more than like a buck, I would think. Sword of Dragon Souls was the Warrior Amazonist way to get around Dragon Caller on release. And uh, yeah, we will not be seeing any powerful Dragon decks unless Red Eyes is like broken. 
but it's still a card that is going to be nice to have in your collection just in case there does become a meta dragon deck and you are playing warriors. Ah oh, man, they keep reprinting some of these best staples, aren't they? Book of Moon is getting yet another reprint, not only in this tournament pack, but it will also be receiving a reprint in the upcoming GX set that is set to release in like two weeks from the video. So uh, yeah, that's cool. Dark Factory of Mass Production is also getting a common reprint in this set. If you see, it has a bunch of Moki Mokis on it, and that's the only thing I think it's worth saying about this card. Um, if you're playing a normal monster deck in this format, cool. Um, I don't know what you would be playing outside of Heroes. So why are you playing Dark Factory of Mass Production in that deck? I'll never know. Um, it's cool, but outside of that, I don't think anybody's really going to be excited when they get it. I don't even know what this card is. I've never read it. I don't know what it does. I don't think it's good because I've... You know, haven't seen any implications for it. Don't even know how to pronounce its name, but we get a common reprint of it. Pretty sure it's a Bakora card. Could be wrong on that one too. But, uh, yeah. Heatwave was responsible for a very degenerate budget dinosaur deck on release. Um, you just played it with the uh, dinosaur field spell skill and make all your cobbles all as a 2000 beater. Behind a heatwave, your opponent wasn't able to summon any effect monster such as the perfectly ultimate great moss. And uh, because of that, uh, you actually had a very powerful deck that you were playing around with. Um, a lot of my people, whenever that we start our locals up, were actually on this card. So it is definitely a card that is nice to see come back to the format. Um, and uh, hopefully we see people abuse this card at some point. Iron Draw, it is the bad version of Pot Agreed for your uh, machine deck. Um, that's all I really got to say about this card. I don't think it's very good at all. But uh, I have seen it be used a couple times, and there have been very explosive plays coming from it being used. It's just I personally wouldn't play it. Light Force Source is getting its common reprint. We haven't seen this since the very first set of Speed Duels. And uh, yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's about time we get a cool reprint, but it's only ever cool. I don't think we're ever going to see anybody use this. If you pull it from your pack, you're probably going to throw it away. It might be a buck. You ever wonder why Seven Tools as a Bandit was never used in Speed Duels? I feel like this card had so many, like, there was, there's been so many formats where we could have used this thing, and we just never have. We could literally use it this format. We're just like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to negate one trap and then not use Seven Tools to negate the other. Like, okay. A major upset, which is kind of good in the Moki Moki Ojama decks. I mean, if you're into those little baby decks, then cool. I think that it's also a side deck for um, the... Skull Servant deck, but I could be wrong with that. It's just not a card I ever really played, not a card I'm really excited uh, for to come to this. It could have definitely been anything. I could literally like pull up a card like right now that could be a reprint and it would have been better than a major upset, but that's what we got. So I have like a hundred copies of this card. I'm telling you, I thought this card was going to be the goo and then they released the Waking the Dragon. So I mean, it's cool that it's here. <laughs> I like it. Um, if Waking the Dragon ever gets banned, we're probably going to pivot to having this card in the side deck again for back row destruction decks. But uh, yeah, it, it's okay. Did you know that this card summons from hand? Because uh, yeah, I just figured out Dragon's Rebirth summons from hand in a recent episode of Progression Draft that we do live every Sunday on the uh, Odd Toxin Gaming channel. Um, and yeah, I, I thought it was always from Graveyard and I lost because you can summon cards from hand. And arguably, probably the most important reprint to come out of this is going to be the common Floodgate Trap Hole. Floodgate Trap Hole does have a couple of printings in Speed Duels, one being an Ultra Rare, one being a Secret Rare, one being a Common, and now we are going to get it as a Common in this next tournament pack. However, it's really good for like new players coming into the game that don't really have multiple boxes or multiple copies of this card. It's just really nice to for them to have that, and uh, yeah, Floodgate's seeing a comeback in current Yu-Gi-Oh right now because of the Trap Trick deck. So it is nice to see this card, uh, you know, get a reprint. All right, and here is the confirmed listing for the brand new characters that have been revealed. Um, Duels of the Shadows even includes skill cards for popular supporting characters. If you picked up uh, the Battle City box and Duel Academy box, you'll have all the cards you need to assemble your very own Dark Scorpion deck, uh, by, led by Don Zaluk himself. I have thumbnail art for this. I knew this was going to happen. I'm very happy. I love the Dark Scorpions. But you can also call upon the Spirit of the Pharaoh as Abydos, the Third, and unleash a Reptile Rampage as Viper to, or harness the power of dark, darkness with a new version of Ubel. That's the part that's really interesting to me. I don't know what that means. I mean, we got Dark Jesse in the last one, which was an interesting character to see, but we didn't really, like, a new version of Ubel. Does that mean we get 
original Yubel because it's not in the speed duels deck yet, or does that mean it's Yubel possessing somebody else? Um, I don't know who all Yubel possesses in the anime. Maybe it was, uh, what is his name? Uh, the Cyber Dragon guy, but I don't know. I, I haven't watched that far into the anime. Um, but yeah, you'll even find strong cards that are totally new to speed dueling, such as Elmatio Shining Flare Wingman, Armed Dragon Level 10, and the card that everybody was going crazy about, Vampiric Koala. That's right, we are getting Chilling in the Outback support in that card. I've had mixed opinions about this, but in the end, I don't necessarily think that this card is going to be, like, broken in the format. It's cool, for sure, um, but, and I've seen people say that it's broken. But it's not. I mean, yeah, uh, what is it? Spike Shield with Chain or whatever it's called. Um, that card's a card in the format. But Koalas are barely used now. And I've only ever seen them do well in a local level. So it's a cool deck for sure. This card is going to make it even cooler. They're going to be gaining a lot of life points now. But if Guardian Angel Joanne wasn't doing anything, Vampire Koala is not going to do anything. Nightmare Wheel, Zoma the Spirit, Book of Moon, Wall of Disruption, all have reprints, and then we're also seeing the Super Polymerization, DD Crow, Macrocosmos, and Allure of the Darkness we already knew about getting its confirm here, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a really interesting like discussion to be had here, because the Reptiles, the Ubel cards, the Don's Luke cards, and the Spirit of the Pharaoh cards are obviously going to be the additional 20 cards. All of them are probably going to have their own skill. I can see Donza Lug becoming a uh, Dark Scorpion through his skill. I can see the Spirit of the Pharaoh having some weird way to special summon out your normal zombie monsters. I can see that uh, um, the uh, Viper deck being able to put your, what are they called, the Poison Tokens? Are they Viper Tokens or something? I can't remember. Um, Venom Tokens. I can see them being able to put the Venom counters onto uh, your, you know, reptile monsters or onto your opponent's monsters to shrink down their attack power. Uh, and, you know, Ubel, again, it's just a conversation to be had that we really can't know for sure until the box releases because Ubel is just such a weird character. Is it like Jaden Ubel? Is it Ubel by herself? Is it Jesse Ubel? Like, who is Ubel possessing in this one? What are we going to be seeing here? But what's your thoughts on this? Um, of course, if you like this type of content, make sure you leave a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to see more. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.